he's reincarnated. You got to know what my dad went through. I'm going to tell you because he's not going to because he's too too polite or good of a man to tell you about his struggles. You know, he's grateful. He's got gratitude and he feels blessed. Okay. Hi, it's Bridget at Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. This weekly channeling video, we have sort of a theme. I wanted to connect with some of my favorite Christmas singers or singers of songs that I love around the holiday season. And so it seems quite fitting that we bring in Nat King Cole for this afterlife conversation. I hope you enjoy it. So of course, without even giving it a second thought, we've got to bring in Natalie Cole as well, his daughter. They are both in the afterlife. So let's bring them in. It's interesting because I I wanted to chat with you, but I wasn't really sure what to ask you or what to talk with you about. Um, may I call you Nat or do you prefer Mr. Cole? Or he says, oh, call me Nat. No problem, call me Nat, call me Nat, he says. Um, I see him at a piano right away, beautiful piano. Very, and it's really lacquered, like shiny, really. Uh, he said it's a fancy one, you know. He said, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how fancy it is or how prestigious it is or how, how expensive it is. He said, it's just, it's a, a piano is a piano. You can play anywhere, anytime and make just beautiful sound, he says. All right. And I see your daughter with you as well. Of course, I wanted to be polite and invite her in too. I know that um, my memory, I know that the two of you sang together in like a, um, I remember seeing the song Unforgettable with Natalie in the front singing and beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous voice, gorgeous voice. And with you on a screen in the back, you know, and your voice was being um, brought in as well. And so that was such a beautiful combination of energy. So let, can I start with that? So what, what, um, what do you think, what do you think of that, Nat? I mean, that's kind of an interesting place to start, but let's start there. What do you think of that? Um, sometimes in, during performances, entertainment, um, the, the singer who is no longer with us in human form will be superimposed on a big screen um, that was sort of done with Prince um, at the Super Bowl show in 2018, and that was all, also done um, at a concert, uh, a Queen concert with Freddie Mercury in the background as well. And so those are just two examples that I know of. So what did you, wh how do you feel about that? And what's your opinion or view on that? He says, it's, it's quite all right. He said, it's quite, it's quite right. He said, it was my daughter. He said, it was my daughter. I can't speak for others, he says. I can't speak for others, but it was my daughter. It was my daughter. He has a great smile. You have a great smile. His smile is just huge, you guys. Huge, like big smile. And um, there's a lot of, it's just like, well, of course, of course I would do that. I would be, I would be, of course I'd be okay with that. He says, you know, it's kind of nostalgic, isn't it? That, well, music itself, song brings up memories for many and it's through song that we can we can reconnect with times in our lives that maybe were happier or better and for me in my life he says I I tried to write songs he said I tried to write music he said I, I don't feel that I was as good at writing music as I was at playing or singing music <laughs> but he says when I tried to write music it was really about that, that feeling, that reflection, you know, having a reflective quality is something that, that endures. It does endure. It lives throughout time. And I feel that that's probably, he says, okay, so he's saying that's a constant that you will find that in other, in other um, musicians 
theming. It's interesting the way that we're communicate. Okay, now I'm getting pushed in and kind of down a little bit. The way that we're communicating is I'm hearing chunks of dialogue, phrases, a little staccato like, short phrases, sentences even, which is clear audience, my friends who are watching. And then I just got kind of this feeling. Um, and it's like I just got gifted, like all of a sudden my belly kind of feels warm and then everything opens up. So kind of what just happened is almost a transference of information or knowledge, which is like the intuition or the gift of knowing or claircognizance in some cases, but some would associate that with the mind. But it's in my tummy is where I get it. I, re I receive this information and then it kind of opens up, it expands. So, so this is how I'm getting information from, from Nat. We have no commonalities, you and I. Um, my human life, nothing. Like, I, I can't even relate to your life. Um, as a singer, as an entertainer, as a black man who grew up in the entertainment industry that was dominant with white people, and here I am, the white person, talking to you, and I feel kind of, um, I'm not sure what to, it just, it feels kind of different. It feels, it feels a bit awkward for me. But it feels like this is important and I want to speak with you. And I love your, the Christmas song. I love your, I have a CD of yours with beautiful Christmas music and I have such a respect for your incredible voice. But I also feel like that's a bit superficial, quite frankly, because I feel like back in the time that you were a performer that you didn't get the respect that your voice earns, that your gift earns. It's not just about uh, your, uh, having a commodity or having a voice or uh, uh, having the talent. It's not just about a commodity and other people just taking advantage of that, but it's about recognizing beauty everywhere that it is. And he kind of leans forward and he said, you're talking about like civil rights and growing up in, in the, the 50s and the 60s, right? That's what you're talking about. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I recognize that um, I can't relate to the struggles that you've had. And I have talked to lots of entertainers and singers like Frank Sinatra and for just for example, kind of in that genre a little bit. And I, I, there's like no comparison. Like when I connect with you, there's not like this freedom and this boisterous energy that comes through and this like prominence. There's not a prominence. There's not like a levity. And, it, and it, it bothers me. It feels uncomfortable for me because I feel like you like taught just connecting with you and feeling your energy as you gifted to me and my solar plexus so I can speak about it here in my tummy so I can speak about it. It feels like you have, you, it feels like you're genuinely happy. Like you're genuinely um um, grateful, um, thankful for your life, but it also feels like you're a man that has some passions and maybe had a little bit of a temper. I can also see that or getting frustrated with yourself or with the circumstances or situation um, that situations that were presented to you around you. But I also don't see you angry at like the civil rights stuff and the, the segregation piece. I don't see you necessarily angry about that. I see you angry about I just don't want to say angry. I see you fired up about a kind uh, it's sort of like I feel like you wanting other people around you to be treated fairly. Isn't the right word? I, w I see you getting angry about like your your fellow musicians and the the access that they have or did not have because of this color of their skin. Let's just call it what it is because it's true. It's racism. And Right now where we're at here in 2018, when I'm recording this video, we've had a huge rise in all sorts of discrimination and um, racism and gender and sexism, all sorts of stuff. It's just really ramp, like ramped up right now and everybody's really aware of it, um, but it's making a lot of clashes, you know? So I wish I could say it's gotten better, but I don't know because I didn't live 
I didn't live. I didn't live in your skin, so I don't know. But I feel like your legacy, though, like, okay, so um, when I'm watching or listening to, when I'm watching Christmas movies, which I love old Christmas movies, and when I'm listening to Christmas songs, I'm hearing a whole bunch of white people. <laughs> and maybe I'm listening to the wrong things. I don't know. Maybe I'm not looking for it, but it seems like that's the big, um, these voices, you know, are, are all all the same, all from one type of peoples. And connecting with you makes me want to open to other, maybe some other not as well publicized or promoted, let's say that, um, talents of the time. He says, you should check out, he says, you should, even the Motown stuff, he said, you should check out the early days in Detroit, he says you know, like Aretha Franklin. He says, you, t- you spoke with Aretha. He's telling me, he's like, you spoke with Aretha. He's like, you, Bridget, he's like, Bridget, you don't need to feel guilty about racism that I encountered or how I'm not, uh, about me not being as famous or well-known as others. You don't need to, you don't need to carry that. He says, that's not the point of us talking. So tell me what the point of us talking is because you have come up over and over again for me and I have not been quite able to connect for myself. He says, that's on you. He says, that's on you. That's you. Okay. He says, you got to stop worrying about what other people think. Okay. He says, you're very sincere. He says to me, you're very sincere. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So why are we talking that? Why is it so important to bring you forward, especially during this holiday season at this time? That's the time we're doing this video. He says, um, he's telling me, you want to make a point of it. You want to make a point of it. Okay. Can you say more about that? It's a time when many are lost in comparison. And many are forgetting what brought us here. And now is the time to remind people. And it's not just reminding you about your family and what matters. It's, it's reminding you about how you got to this point as a country, as a nation. That's important. It's not like I was some big activist either. Like he's not showing me that. I and mean, he's, he's just saying, hey, I just, I do my work. I do what I can. I take care of things. And um, I just do my work. You know, I do my work, share my gifts, my talents. He doesn't say gift. He doesn't refer to it as that. I say gift because clearly his voice is incredible. And oh, God, there's emotion here. His daughter is here, Natalie, I mentioned. And she says, Dad dealt with a lot. Dad put up with a lot. Dad put up with a lot. Dad is really humble, and he's not going to say, because he's a proud man, too, and he won't say that it was hard, and it was not fair, and it was not fair. She says, it was not fair. It was not fair that some of those, that she said, she's saying to me, like a Hollywood mogul, Hollywood moguls treated him so unfairly, and like, he didn't get the same pay, not nearly the same pay, not the, not the respect, not the opportunities, not the um the he's showing me contracts she's showing me contracts that other white people got and she says but that didn't make dad bitter dad's not bitter he said my father she says my father is a proud man and he would not be bitter he would not take it out on someone else that he would be performing on the same stage with who had less talent than he did and they would make he would make maybe a third of the money let's just be clear on that let's be real clear on that but dad made sure we never knew it, that we never knew the struggles he had. We never knew how different things were for him in comparison to others. He sa- she says, um, she's telling me there were times though when people um, made fun of her or she was teased. I think she has a brother. There's another little boy that she's with that's African-American as well. And it feels like they were bullied or teased or picked on or that kind of a thing and like I see right outside I see a a really I see a pretty house 
really nice um, um, house, nice manicured lawn, nice house, nice, nice neighborhood. And like kind of like middle class, upper middle class kind of neighborhood is what I would maybe compare it to. And I see a long walkway with like um, hedges, like short hedges on it. And it's a really nice lawn, manicured lawn. And I see her with like a dress and like a a car little cardigan with a collared white shirt. And then I see the like little um, bobby socks and I see um, her with her school bag right there. And I, so, and I feel like she feels really innocent, really just, you know, how children are just so just innocent and accepting and just really open and kind and stuff. And I feel like there was a change, like something happened where um, people were mean, cruel. She says cruel. She said they were cruel to me and they were cruel. She said they were cruel. And she said, but um, she said, dad, and she said, mama made sure that we knew that it wasn't because of us and that we needed to pray for them. We needed to bless them and that God needed to um, be the one to judge them or to punish them, that that was not our job. So I, religion was important, it feels like. She said, yeah, faith, you know, God, belief in God and prayer. I see Georgia, Georgia, Alabama area. I don't know if you were from there or if your um, mother was from there, but I feel you connecting with mom. I feel mom energy. <sighs> Nat, I would love to know, um, do you have a, I, I'm, I'm curious, I just like talk, I, I like this, how this is unfolding and, and talking, but I want to keep it interesting also for the viewers. So can you chat with me a little bit about, do you have a favorite song or maybe a favorite performance that you did? I don't know where the Apollo Theater is. I don't know where that is. He said, are you familiar with the Apollo? I said, I said no. Um, and it looks like he's with a band. He said, my band and I. Like, he doesn't feel like a solo guy. He feels like my band. It's always us together doing stuff. And then I also see him on television. Like, a, like in my time, it'd be like the Johnny Carson show or Tonight Show, but it's not. It might be Ed Sullivan or somebody else. It's somebody else. It's before that. Before that, he's like, oh, way back. He said, you go, you got to go way back. You got to go farther back than that. He might have been the first African-American that was on TV as a band or something. There's some kind of a... <sighs> There's some kind of a precedent or some kind of a, a breaking a barrier that he did. And, that, and it was about television, something about television. Oh, did you have a Christmas special? And he says, and then he says, ABC, NBC, <laughs> like ABC. He says. And then I see the NBC. I hear ABC and I see NBC. Um, so big network, it feels like public, tele like television, like televised. Yes. He said, yeah, yes, yes. He says, yes, yes. He's like, yeah, you're getting closer. I'm like, okay, sorry. All right. So um, can you talk a little bit about what it was like to transition into the afterlife when you left your body and then talk a little bit about what it's like to be spirit? That's an important piece to connecting with the afterlife here at Above Life Channel. He says it was a bit bumpy. Um, when I checked out, he said it was a bit bumpy, a little bit bumpy at first. It almost feels like there's a heart something going on, like the heart uh, it start, starts and stops. I don't know if you had multiple heart attacks or what's going on, but I feel like his heart's stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Um, so he didn't like, they thought he died, but then he didn't die. And then, I don't know. I don't know if you had more than one instance or episode, whatever the deal is with the heart. Um, maybe the lungs are involved too. Um, heart, lungs, this. Um bit bumpy he said it was a bit bumpy when i checked out um i also see i see the month of october i don't know if that what significance that is if i see october and then i also see oh this is weird um i also see being in california but down southern california so i don't know if it's like palm springs santa barbara it's not not necessarily hollywood but there's another place there's a different place that's down. So like San Diego maybe or something, but there's another place that's down that feels like a place that's a good place for you or has happy memories or positive experience there. Um, Etta, he said Etta Fitzgerald. He just said Etta right away. He said Etta. 
Um, I don't know if he respected her, looked up to her, or if they performed together. Um, he said, I knew Aretha. He said that alone. Um, I don't know if it's no of her or are they actually performed together. I can see him with uh, Frank Sinatra. I can see him with like a good old boys network kind of in a, like a club performing in like Hollywood or something. I can see that. I can see um, Frank Sinatra. I see Bing Crosby, but that's just because I need to channel him. Hmm. And let's see. Uh, oh, I feel like there's a son too. There's a boy or there's somebody that died. Somebody else that died that's younger, a younger man. A boy that died or a child that died unless it was a brother maybe it was a brother I see some other people in the afterlife family related with you um, so when I asked what is it like to be in the afterlife or what is it like to be an afterlife spirit then you then I started to see all these other people that have died before you that are there or that have died since is it both he says well he said it's everything everybody's together he said the energy is all together all the people are together um, he said it's like a reunion. So do you still perform or sing in the afterlife? That's a really good question I think people will be interested in. Yes. He says, yes. Yes, I do. I teach. I spend a lot of my time teaching. I work with um, young people or musicians who are finding their voice. And fi some, for some, finding their way as well. Finding their way to, he says. He doesn't say as well. He says finding their way to. So I feel like you're, you're maybe being an influence or inspiration to younger um, up-and-coming musicians. Because I see people that are playing piano and they're really, and they're trying to find their voice. They're trying to sing and write. They're writing too. Like I see them writing. So, so you are an inspiration to them or you are intentionally helping to teach them or helping them to find their way. Yes. He said, mm -hmm. he said yeah. Um, are you reincarnated? Can you answer that question? He said, that's a bit tricky. He said, I'm kind of in both places at the same time right now. It feels like, okay, so he says, I'm kind of in both. I'm two people. So I'm connecting to you and talking to you. He said, that could be, and he says to me, Bridget, Miss Bridget, <laughs> That could be why you're having a bit of a trouble trying to connect with me directly and why I have to give you information in this other way through the solar plexus, which is what I'm saying, solar plexus or the intuitive knowing. So you are reincarnated. He's like, yes, if that's what you need to call it, yes, I am reincarnated. However, don't even try to figure out who I am because you're not going to figure out who I am. And I'm not going to tell you because there's kind of rules about that sometimes, you know, there's kind of some things that you maybe don't, it's not very polite to do that. Let's just say that. There's some mysteries that should be remaining mysteries, he says. Okay. Oh, now it's way easier. All of a sudden that's like he came right forward and I can totally feel you. Oh, way easier to connect. Okay. So how is it possible then to channel you as a spirit in the afterlife when, and have you reflect on your human life when you're reincarnated as somebody else right now? How is it possible to be in two places at once or be two people at once? Can you answer that for the viewers? Or can you explain it? He said, it's a bit tricky to explain, he says, but it's how you have described it before in previous, in previous conversations, he says. And that would be like light. Multiple places at the same time, beams of the sun, rays of the sun. The sun is not over one city at one time, it's everywhere. Or in multiple places. And it's not about even, because I'm thinking, I'm trying to have this, like I'm trying to personally, Bridget, trying to figure this out, because I'm like, okay, is it like a, a on and off or a light and dark kind of a balancing thing or a contrast? He says, nope, it's not that. The spirit is infinite. He says, you are infinite. You are infinite intelligence. And because of that, your mind will not understand this. It's the ego mind. It will not process this. It will not understand this. It's, it's not explainable to the mind. But yes, you can be in two places at once because there's not places. There's no place. There's no restrictive 
place. There's no geographic location for spirit for that part of your soul, that light energy spot, that light energy stuff. Right? Okay. How about, so I can talk to you as a person and I can, while you're still reincarnated because it's, there's no geographic location for spirit or soul and it's like light. Like the sun. He says like the sun. Yes. Okay. Well, that makes sense to me, but I, I, for those who are very specific, uh, I'm trying to help discuss it. Um, Natalie, are you reincarnated? She says, oh, no, 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 no. Um, I feel like Natalie has a daughter, though, because she's acknowledging a young girl. <sighs> and a god, no, not a godmother. Mother that's very, like, very, uh, religious isn't necessarily the right word. Religious is not the right word. Very godly, very God bless, very prayer like, very um, faith based. How about that? Um, very much so. Yeah, like gospel songs. I can hear them singing in a church and all that. And it's not Catholic either. It might be Baptist. Something different. It's not Catholic. I don't think it's Catholic. I'm not really great with the religious um, translations because I don't do a religion per se, but okay. Is there anything else that you think that would be important to share at this time? He says, take care of yourself and take care of your body. Stay healthy. That's his message to the viewers. Yes. He said, take care of yourselves, stay healthy, take care of your body. He says, that will serve your mental health. Oh, that will serve your mental health well, he says. Okay. All right. I think that's good. I think we're good. All right. Thank you so much both for your time. We've been ta chatting with Nat King Cole and Natalie Cole from The Afterlife. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that we've inspired your spirit, filled you up with some hope. Remember, the point of these afterlife conversations is to remind you to live your life because this here right now is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.